Today we're at a theme park to help solve your medical mysteries. If you're anxious about an ailment or curious about a condition, then the Algemobile is the place for you. That is incredible. Chris is preparing the clinic ready for his first patient. And Zond is out in the park to answer your burning questions. At the clinic, Chris is open for business. Next patient, please. First in is 10-year-old Soraya with a question about some troublesome teeth. Soraya, why have you come to the Altramobile today? Because I've got an interesting extra tooth in between my two front teeth. What's the diagnosis, Doc? This sounds like a case of I've got an interesting extra tooth between my two front teeth. Itis. Sounds right to me. Open wide. And there he is. Look at that. So, when you're born, all your grown-up teeth are already in your jaw. And when your milk teeth are falling out, it's because your grown-up teeth are pushing them through. And I think what's happened is that tooth is an old milk tooth. And as the two big grown-up teeth have come through, they've pushed that one back. Well, my um, extra tooth ever fall out? In some people, they do fall out, but probably you're going to need it taken out by a dentist. The good news is most of the time the dentist will put you to sleep, so you won't feel a thing, you just wake up and the tooth is gone. Away from the clinic, Zond is out and about in the park. Why does your um, tummy slip when you go up or down on a roller coaster? Inside you, not everything is firmly fixed down. So there are some bits of your body that are quite firmly attached and don't move much, but your stomach isn't one of them. It's quite elastic and it can move around. So what is literally happening is you're going up and your stomach's being pulled down, and then as you go over the hill, your stomach keeps going up and you start going down again. So your stomach is almost flipping. It can make you feel a bit sick. Dr Zand, how do antibiotics know which part of your body to affect? What's happening with every cell in your body is exposed to the antibiotics. But you can imagine the bacteria are quite different cells to the ones in your body. Like they, they, they just work in different ways. They've got different enzymes, different proteins, and so on. And so the antibiotics are specially designed to interfere with the bacteria without interfering with the cells in your body. It's a very difficult question. <laughs> Back at the Algemobile, there's a new case in the waiting room. Next patient, please. And it's eight-year-old Cassius, whose toes need some tending. So, Cassius, what brings you to the Altrimobile? On one of my feet, on all of my toes, on all of my nails, they're golden yellow. What's the diagnosis, Doc? So this sounds like a rare case of, on one of my feet, on all of my toes, all of my nails are golden yellow itis. Easy for you to say. Goodness me, yeah. I can see under your nails is also infected. The fungus that has infected your nails is a bit like a mushroom. And if you ever go to a mushroom farm, they have to grow in dark, damp conditions, a bit like the conditions we find in your shoe. What can I do about it? Well, there are a couple of things you can do. You can take medication, get antifungal treatments that you paint on the nail. And the second thing you can do is wear quite loose fitting shoes that breathe easily. And sometimes on a sunny day like this, you should just wear flip flops. And don't forget to change your socks every day too. Job done for today, clinic closed. Ouch. Now, sometimes on Operation Ouch, what we really like... What are you doing? I'm holding it in. Why didn't you go before I started? Because I need it for this week's investigation ouch. Oh. Now, I know what you're thinking. You should have flushed the toilet, Dr Chris. Well, you're wrong. I didn't use the toilet. But I'm going to wash my hands. I'm actually taking my wee to Bristol. It's here somewhere. Can you get out the map? Because apparently it contains hidden powers. This is the Bristol Robotics Laboratory, and some scientists here have decided that rather than flushing their wee down the toilet, they're going to use it as a power source. And that's why I've brought mine all the way from London. I suppose I could have just gone when I got here. Come on, wee wee. We're off to meet Dr. Yanis Europoulos. He's the brains behind P Power. So, Yanis? I've got something for you. Oh, wow. Thank you very much, Chris. It's my pleasure. So the first thing to say about being here is it really smells in here. Yes, it does. <laughs> it's basically a bit like, imagine if instead of leaving your classroom to go and pee, everyone just peed on the floor. That's a bit like what it smells like. 
but you're putting the we here to slightly better use, aren't you? Yes. So we, we use urine as a fuel for electricity. Yep, you heard right. They're turning we into electricity. So how do you do that? So we will take this urine and we will add it into microbial fuel cells, which are something like batteries, only they have living microorganisms inside, living bugs. The bugs living in the microbial fuel cells, or batteries, feed on the sugars and proteins in urine, breaking it down, and this process creates electricity. In fact, this four litres of wheat could create enough power for 20 minutes of talk time on a mobile phone. But that's not all it can do. Time to see my Wii in action. So this is basically a battery, is that right? Yes, a very complicated one. And what do you use it to power? Uh, at the moment, we use it to power a remotely controlled car. A remote controlled car? Yeah. That's quite cool. I love remote controlled cars. To get the car moving, we first need to top up the battery. So each one of these things that I'm putting the urine into is a microbial fuel cell. And there are bacteria in there that are going to eat the sugars and proteins in the urine and turn them into electricity, which is then going to charge this car. That really works well. At the moment, it takes a very large battery to power a very little car, but hopefully it won't be long before the batteries get smaller and the things they can power get bigger. Yeah, so that, that is amazing, but what's the future? The future is about developing the technology so it can be implemented into developing world countries and provide electricity. It's basically one wonderful way of turning waste into something useful. So, hopefully one day urine will create power for people in developing countries to light their homes and cook their food with. Now, obviously this doesn't mean that you can go and pour urine into all the electronic kit in your house and expect it to work. That would be both incredibly dangerous and very, very smelly. But what we have seen is that scientists have invented a way of producing power from urine. Now, if they can only invent a way of getting rid of the smell, 